All right, gentlemen, today we're talking about leather. Leather is a luxury material used in a wide variety of men's goods, from bags to shoes to belts to gloves. In today's video, I want to talk about leather types. I want to talk about leather quality. I want to talk about leather finishes so you can go out there and make an informed buying decision. You ready, guys? Let's get into it. So first off, let's talk about leather quality. Leather quality is determined by the overall durability of it and the lack of blemishes. Those two things right there are going to oftentimes determine whether it's a first grade, second grade, third grade, or fourth grade quality leather. So let's talk about first grade quality leather. This is going to come from the lower back of the animal and only makes up 13% of the hide. First grade leather has all the qualities manufacturers want for their higher end pieces and it only makes up a small portion of the animal. So that's why it commands such a high price. Next up, we've got second grade leather and it's very close to first grade leather, but it actually makes up 30% of the hide and we're going to see it in and around the buttocks and the middle back of the animal. And what's interesting about this is this is what we start to see mostly with bags. We're going to see it a lot with jackets. The same also with third grade leather. It starts to go lower into the rib area and this is again 32% of the hide. So between second grade and third grade, we see about 62% of the hide being available. Now let's talk about fourth grade leather. Fourth grade leather makes up about 25% of the hide and it's the part of the animal in and around the leg area and in and around the neck and the head. It's going to be something that is going to need a lot of work. But where can you use it guys? On the outsole of shoes actually. You can take that leather, you can layer it, you can actually treat it. It actually becomes something almost different than leather in the sense that when you treat it in a way that it becomes waterproof, it doesn't have to have the malleability but it can still be used. Now let's talk about leather types out there. You're going to hear full grain, you're going to hear top grain, and you're going to hear genuine leather. Now to understand these, let's look at the layers. So when we hear the word full grain, what they're talking about here is this is made up of the grain and the junction of the grain in the corium. And depending on where the cut comes from, during the tanning process, they actually separate the layer and they use various parts here. But usually that top part is going to be some of the most sought after. Now the top grain is actually going to be right where the junction's at. So the, the basically the grain has been removed off of the top grain and it's over in the junction where it starts and then goes into the corium. Now when we hear things that are known as genuine leather, of course they are leather, but they're mostly made up of the corium. Now guys, I want to stress with the various types of leather, one isn't necessarily inferior or superior to the other. It depends on the purpose of the leather. Now let's talk about leather finishing. So I'm going to really simplify this, but after the tanning process that are going to go in there and basically make it so that the leather doesn't rot, it doesn't fall apart, it becomes much more durable, can deal with the environment, and in some cases they start to introduce dyes. Let's talk about that finishing process. So one of the easiest things they do is they actually go over with a very thin plastic coating. Uh, and that right there, if they like the color of the leather underneath, that would all that's all they would have to do. The best analogy I can think of is a cake. If you were to bake a chocolate cake, just a simple white material coming from flour, the flour is white. But when you add the chocolate flavoring, the chocolate colors, it basically makes it brown. In the same way with the leather, we've got that natural, let's say light tan color, but when they can, they actually are in the tanning process and the finishing process, you can actually coat it with a color and then put another layer over it, which is the protective layer. All right, now let's talk about leather thicknesses and they're going to range from one ounce, which is about 0.4 millimeters to 14 ounces, which is about 5.56 millimeters. And let me simply start off with a pair of dress shoes here to explain where we're going to see that wide variety in thicknesses of the leather. So the inside lining of these high end dress shoes right here use a very thin layer of leather. This to me is a great sign of quality dress shoes. Why? Because that extra layer that they took the time to put in there is going to absorb the sweat and that right there is going to protect the outer upper sole of the shoe. So this outer sole, this upper sole part right here, this is going to be about three to five ounces. Understand once you get past six ounces, it becomes a lot less malleable and something that it would be much harder to break in the shoe. Now the 14 ounces, where are we going to see that? On the outsole of the shoe and this is formed by multiple layers. It doesn't have to be one thick 14 ounce cut. That would actually be pretty rare. This one looks like to be about 12. This pair right here, yeah, that looks to be about 14 and you can definitely see some of the layers in here. Now gloves. We're oftentimes, and I haven't really talked about all the different animals you're going to see out there, but kid, 
Uh, we're going to see swine, basically pig. We're going to see also calf. What they want to be, three ounces right here, and they want to be going for something that is going to be very soft. Not necessarily as durable, but these aren't work gloves. These are nice gloves that I can wear in a, in a cold winter. And also, you'll notice these are navy in color. So getting back to the treatments, they probably actually treated, I would think, just the upper layer of this pair of gloves here. Now, when it comes to belts, eight ounces on this right here. I can see that this is a double layer of leather. So they probably went with maybe two, five ounces right here. And then on the inside, they're going to have a material in here. Some companies, and I've seen some companies actually use metal in here. Now, I haven't really talked about any exotics like ostrich or reptiles or anything like that. So this is actually leather, but it's made to look like an exotic. Now, animals like this, this is buffalo right here. And this is going to be actually a very thick material. When buffalo is interesting, and especially people don't like to polish the buffalo. They want to actually show where this came from. Things like this are going to command a higher price because they're coming from more of an exotic material. All right, now let's talk about jackets. So three to four ounces, we're going to see usually in suede's lighter weight jackets, but in heavier weight jackets, five to six ounces. This one right here, it, I can tell it's been treated to become softer, but it's a very thick leather right here for durability and protection. You want to go for like six to seven ounces and you can feel that thickness of the leather when compared to a lighter weight material like this. All right, Jen, so a lot in this video. I'm going to link in the description of this video to other videos in which I talk about how to take care of your leather. I go into a lot more detail about leather and you've probably seen throughout this, those infographic images. Guys, I'm linking to that infographic again down in the description. Keep it, take it. Please, I've got so many great resources for you over at Real Men Real Style. We've got premium courses. So if you're interested in taking your style to the next level with help, with coaching, I've got that available for you as well. Guys, at Real Men Real Style, I've really tried to create something so that you can become the man you know yourself to be. Guys, appreciate you. I appreciate everything you've, we've built here at Real Men Real Style, and I will see you in the next video, right? All right, guys, take care. You're at an event where there's so much success around you. And there's so many people at your level as far as your own peers and whatnot. You can grow with one another as well as learn from the successes and mistakes of other people who already have inspired you. The lectures are great, but the best part is connecting in the conversations, whether it's around the food truck or just mingling on the sidelines on the bar, uh, getting to connect with some of the guys you've been watching on YouTube and shaking their hands and getting to know them as genuine people.